Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel again. Um, so I think this video I'm going to talk to you about choosing direct the correct type of waterproof jacket for deer stalking. There's many brands out there today that are heavily, heavily, heavily marketed. These companies have millions and millions of euro to, at their own dispense to implement on marketing campaigns. And I suppose the modern era now, we're so influenced by media, social media and marketing campaigns. It's hard not to fall into the trap of always kind of wanting the next best thing, the next best thing, and so on and so forth. I've tried an awful lot of stalking brands. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, you know, I don't want to get sued or whatever, like, but let's just say for the price of them, the amount of money I'm after spending on them, it's, and not lasting a season it's just ridiculous 350 euro for pants for waterproof pants that fails within six months a waterproof jacket that's meant to be the world's most durable outdoor clothing failed within a season like it's 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 not on it frustrated me it frustrated me To be honest, some of these brands are more geared to the to the high seat stalker. Not an against high seat stalking. If that's what you're into, that's what you're into. And yes, the gear that you buy are going to be is going to be suitable for that. And I'll tell you the reason why. There's two types of waterproof membranes that are available. The first one I'm going to talk about is your normal Gore-Tex, your normal Gore-Tex um, waterproof membrane. Yes, there's other, other uh, different brands of waterproof membrane available, uh, Event, Ventile, and so on and so forth. And they're all based on the same principle. This jacket here, is my mountaineering jacket. It's absolutely bomb proof. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Sandwiched between the, the inner layer, the inner layer and the outer layer is a Gore-Tex membrane. So you have your inner, your Gore-Tex membrane and your outer. Your outer is treated with a DWR, durable water repellency, and that, that repels, let's say, 70 to 80% of the rain and the elements coming in at you. And then you have your waterproof membrane, your Gore-Tex membrane, and then your inner. From a deer stalking perspective, waterproof membranes, in my opinion, aren't good. They're not great, and I'll tell you why. If you're going through heavy cover, if you're going through brambles, whether it be on your, your bottom par, part of your body, your top part of your body, you're going through brambles, you're going through Sitka spruce, what happens is, is over time, even when you're just brushing by the, the pine needles, the needles, they act like exactly what they are, needles, and they pierce inside they're like a hypodermic syringe you just go straight in and pierce that membrane now over time that membrane the holes in the membrane are going to open up and it doesn't matter how many times you try and reproof it with you know the nick wax tx direct the waterproofer that suggested to you, that gore-tex actually recommend to use it doesn't matter how many times you try and reproof that it's not going to work it's just going to fall, it's going to fault. And that, 
it's very it's very frustrating. There's not many brands out there that will actually do it all. There's not many brands. I'll rephrase that. There's no brand out there that has come up with an all like an all in one do it all jacket. You're gonna to have to sacrifice on lightweight for durability. You're gonna to have to sacrifice on water repellency for breathability. I just haven't come across the most perfect jacket yet. But getting back to the, the membrane, like they, they won't last for sim for that particular reason of just being barraged by you know, cover, dense cover, torns and whatever, like, and, like, I'm, I, I, I put my gear to the test, I test it, I use it, I try and use it as a tool, I don't, I don't like looking after clothing, to be honest, to a, well, to a certain degree, it's there to be used, you use it, and, The jackets, they just, they've just, they've let me down. The membrane have let me down. Up until a couple of years ago. Now, have a look at this. This is the next type of waterproof jacket I'm going to talk about. Now, this bad boy here. Hopefully you can see it. Right? That jacket. That jacket is six or seven years old. And it's a Paramo Valise smock. And it has served me extremely extremely well that jacket has been to scotland stalking red deer with me it's been over there several times i've stalked in it in wicklow and crawled on my stomach for kilometers and kilometers and kilometers to get in for that perfect shot use it for wildlife photography i've used it in the Derry Bay Mountains in Donegal for my mountain leader training, one and two, in particularly harsh weather. And it, in my opinion, is absolutely bomb proof. Yes, there's a few kind of, and like this goes through, like this goes through like briars, like as if the briars don't even exist goes through dense cover trying to retrieve a wounded deer like as if it acts as an armor. And yes, there's one or two nicks that are caused from, from, where are they? There's one on the arm, it doesn't matter. Yeah, there's one here. Like that little small little thing there that I think that went through like a barbed wire fence, but it took most of the fence with me. And and for for I can't really praise this jacket enough. We'll go on to some of this jacket's features. And guys, I'm not sponsored. I'm just talking. I'm just trying to make content here that you will actually enjoy and might even listen. You know, so I'm not sponsored by these at all whatsoever. But the. As I was talking in my other jacket, that uses a Gore-Tex membrane. The Nick Wax analogy, analogy doesn't use a membrane. And this is where it gets very interesting. Yes, you have your inner, you have your Nick Wax analogy. It's, it's like a, a material, a, a, a densely woven fabric kind of artificial fur. And then you have your outer, which is again treated by a DWR. But the difference being is that 
it uses kind of the same concept as animals use to repel water from their body. In, the, 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 their, in their membrane, we'll call it their membrane, it's basically the outside of it has, the, the inside of it has densely woven kind of, let's say, fur, and the outside of it has these, again, under a microscope, you'd have to see this, but they act like the fur of, let's say, a deer. The densely woven fur, when, let's say, this is a water molecule coming in, it bounces off the densely woven fur, forms on the outside, and the pressure from the inside of your body forces it back out. The benefit of that is, is number one, it's extremely, extremely breedable. It's so breedable, in fact, that if you were to get a slice of this material, put it over, let's say, a, a pot of boiling water, because it can't escape, because the moisture can't escape that easily, that material will literally pop off. If you do the same with this and put it over the water, the water vapor you'll actually see coming up. That to me is a game changer. Having that element of breedability, it, makes, it means that you can go harder for longer and you won't get as sweaty inside this as you will inside this. Another key point and key benefit of the Nick Wax analogy that I have absolutely found a top, like just, just it's mind blown. Is that remember I was saying the the needles going piercing in the membrane, in the Gore-Tex membrane, and they can't be healed once once a needle goes through that, that's it, they're done. Because of this fabric material, this woven fabric material, if a need, if a pine needle goes into that, it just pops back out, in and out. And that is why, goddamn phone. <laughs> One second. And I'm back. Sorry. And because of that, I have found this to be my ultimate deer stalking jacket. Another key feature of this that I like is the breast pocket. Breast pocket in this, 30 odd six. <laughs> the breast pocket in this, it's, it's, you can put some gloves in it, a hat or whatever, you can put your phone in it, whatever. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice size, it's a nice space. It's a nice space to have easily accessed. But on the side of it, Let's say if you were going up, traipsing up a mountain in Scotland or Wicklow, and you're really heavily perspiring, the side, the side vents can be opened up, can be opened up and allow more air to come in. On the inside of these side zips, we also have an area where you can put your hands, a hand warming area. So keep them nice and warm for on winter's days or cold spring stalks. Cuffs are deadly. Cuffs are unbelievable. They roll up quite easily and you can literally with a Velcro tab quench them or cinch them and it stops the most of the water when you're glassing. I find sometimes with other jackets, when you're glassing at a deer, whatever, because you're moving your hands constantly up, the water tends to leak down. With these, you won't really, yes, a certain element will get in, excuse me, but not on these, not as much on these. Um, that's, really all nice hood on it you have steel rod going through that or a flexible steel rod 
So if you are have a P cap on or whatever, you can just quench it in. You can adjust that at the back via elastic. You can also cinch them down here. Also, also um, reducing the amount of, especially in heavy weather, reducing the amount of air and water that can get in around your face. You can easily adjust the hood by obviously these um, adjustable toggles here. So, conclusive, conclusive, let's say, final judgment on this jacket. Definitely worth looking into, definitely worth even talking to people who have them. Um, Price-wise, I have no idea. I think they're in around the 300 euro mark. So it's not a inexpensive jacket by all means. But it's definitely one that you'll have for several, several years. And after seven years of dog use, it still has let me down. Like with all jackets, they have to be looked after, especially membranes like Gore-Tex and indeed the Nick Wax analogy. So you have to keep on top of the reproofing. You have to keep on top of the, the washing as well. Because if you don't do that, you're simply not going to get the same, um, same protective aspects from it. But... It's not, the, the Nick Wax analogy is not going to be, let's, let's call a spade a spade, it's not going to be as 100%, well it's not, you can't really say a jacket is 100% waterproof because it's not. They're, compared to Gore-Tex, they're probably around 90%, 85 to 90% up there. But for the sheer, for the sheer quality and durability of this jacket and the breathability, they're definitely worth looking into. So that's kind of my take on jackets, shooting jackets. I've hoped you've liked it. And again, it's all coming from a place of experience. It's all coming from a place of I've actually used these products in field use. So it's not like I'm getting paid, as I said, to promote these brands, not getting paid at all. <laughs> I'd like to, but I'm not. I am a qualified mountain leader, so being dry and being comfortable in the hill as well is something that's important to me. So, and I have used cheaper stuff over the years and I've found stuff good and stuff not so good. But yeah, I hope you liked it. And indeed, like and subscribe and share. It, it does help, it does help the uh, channel grow. And there's people also messaging me on Facebook and Instagram asking questions. And if you have any questions to ask, Lash them on. Comment below. Um, I'll leave. I'll try and find a link to this jacket, the Paramo Valise mock somewhere, and I'll leave it down in the description below. So definitely, definitely worth trying. Paramo Valise mock. Guys, thanks a million, and I'll talk to you on the next one.